So I'm Derek Lee. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in Dr. Seafried's lab, and I, I recently wrote the paper on amino acid fermentation. It's very challenging sometimes to take a specific experiment from a specific paper and try to make an actionable approach on that. That's why we do both the uh, data papers, like the one I just published, and we also try to write review articles to try and take some of the field together and do more actionable approaches. So I think if you're looking at the cancer literature and you want to find an approach for yourself or someone else, I think it's important to find out what variables can you manipulate. For example, when we talk about glucose and glutamine, you can uh, inhibit the amount of glutamine or glucose coming into your body by not eating carbohydrates or sugar, such as a ketogenic diet. Whereas glutamine, at least in the diet, you, you can't avoid glutamine. Glutamine is a fundamental amino acid that is in all types of food. So that's where, unfortunately, we need to use things like drugs or different compounds to inhibit the utilization of glutamine. So it's not that you have to understand every single aspect of a scientific paper because it is very challenging, but I think it's important to think about what, what are the takeaways from that paper and what's actionable for you. I think it's really important to evaluate what stage your cancer is at. For example, stage zero or stage one cancers, <clears throat> there's a very high survival rate for those cancers. You don't always have to go on a 14 day water fast to deal with a stage zero cancer, but you might wanna do a ketogenic diet if you don't want to do a low dose of chemotherapy or a surgery to extract it. It's kind of about balancing the the risk to reward ratio for a given treatment. There's no, there's no treatment on the planet that has no risk, but you have to balance what your stage is versus what treatment options you want to approach. I think something like press pulse protocol is something that's more for stage four cancers because you've likely exhausted all other options and maybe the first line chemotherapy didn't work or it only stopped the tumor for a little bit and now it's come back. So press pulse protocol can now introduce a new modality to try and fight that cancer, whereas maybe a second line or third line chemotherapy may not have helped. But again, if you have a stage zero or a stage one, maybe doing something like a, a hybrid of metabolic therapy plus some standard of care can, can be applicable and you can, and can see great results without having to do a, a full-blown protocol or, or something more drastic like that. I think, I've, unfortunately, I found myself in that situation. I would definitely implement the press pulse protocol, and I think I do have to say that to some level, but I, I do truly believe in it, right? Because I've spent a lot of time investigating what a cancer cell actually requires, and I know a lot about the differences between the requirements of a cancer cell versus a normal cell, which is a, kind of what my paper went into, right? Although I didn't have a normal cell to compare it to, we do do those studies in the lab with, with other people in our lab, and I'm pretty confident that if I can restrict glucose and glutamine uh, in myself, I would have a much better chance against cancer than someone who did not. Now, do I strictly have to do press pulse protocol by itself? No. I think you could do a press pulse protocol or metabolic therapy or ketogenic diet in conjunction with something like a low dose chemotherapy. Not all chemotherapies are blisteringly toxic to the body, but at, at high doses, they, they can be. So one of the benefits of doing a ketogenic diet is that sometimes you can reduce the amount of chemotherapy you need, or you know maybe in some cases avoid it entirely. But I, th I think the first adoption for ketogenic metabolic therapy or press pulse is, is a hybrid approach. And I, and I think that's m most sustainable for most people because you will have the support of your oncologist and uh, you won't have to deal with you know, a bit, bit of an argument back and forth between an oncologist or the primary literature you're reading, which, which is honestly a very important consideration when you're, you're in this situation. You, know, you, you might be very bought in to what we write about, but you don't wanna have an argument with your oncologist about it. So it, it's, it, I think what, 
a lot of people do is a hybrid approach. And we, we, we've seen very successful results as a result of that. So you don't always have to do one or the other. Now, I personally am a bit stubborn, so I think I would err on the side of doing ketogenic metabolic therapy or press pulse by itself first. But I would never rule out taking a small dose of chemotherapy to augment the uh, state of nutritional ketosis that I'm now in because I did metabolic therapy as a, as a primer for that low dose chemotherapy. Yeah, so cancer prevention is, a, is really important because if you can just avoid dealing with the problem in the first place, you never have to go to those more severe options. <clears throat> what I do is I try to eat a low carbohydrate or ketogenic diet in general, and I also work out a lot because I think if you put these minor stresses on your body, such as exercise or not a huge influx of carbohydrates, I think these can reduce the chance of getting risk factors that will lead to cancer down the road. So for example, with food, if you're eating a highly processed carbohydrate diet, that might increase your risk of diabetes and it in fact will. Now, diabetes and obesity is now essentially the number one risk factor for cancer. So if you can avoid getting diabetes or becoming overweight, such as by avoiding a highly processed carbohydrate diet, then you'll have a lower chance of getting cancer and that'll help you prevent it. Now, I also always stress to people the importance of exercise. If we want to look at glucose and glutamine, for example, like in the case of our work, uh, muscles function as a sink for glucose throughout the day, and especially when you're actively doing exercise. Your muscles burn glucose very fast, uh, and that can help reduce your glucose levels in your blood so you don't have excess glucose in your blood all the time. And another really important aspect about glutamine is that we now know that exercise can reduce glutamine in your body. Uh, there was a study, or several studies actually, that have very high intensity exercise, so not just walking around or going for a light jog, but maybe sprinting or very severe weightlifting, can actually reduce glutamine in your body, the concentration in your blood, for several hours. Now that might not be enough to completely starve the cancer cell entirely, but if you're doing something like that in conjunction with a ketogenic diet, you're now effectively reducing both glucose and glutamine, you know, pulsing it or pressing it, depending on which modality we're talking about, and that can help both prevent cancer induction or potentially help treat it as well.